Hey everybody, how's it going? Lady Leanna here with another edition of Leanna's Insights. And today I wanted to talk to you about the all too common subject of trouble and difficulties within relationship or marriage. Now I'm not a doctor of philosophy or psychiatry or even a counselor within family counseling. But I am 48 years old. I've been abused. I've been cheated on. I've been uh, spiritually and emotionally whooped within relationship. And I believe along with millions and millions of other people, I am as professional as someone who has never been through relationship difficulties and yet is in psychiatry. I believe that we are all professionals within the field of family counseling to some degree. We've been through it or we're seeing people go through it, whether it's us or we're living in our mom and dad's house and we're watching it through them. No matter whether you are 15 or 54, I mean, we are all pretty much counselors, okay? And um, let's be real, in this day and age, whether it's the government pressing around on us with their ideals as to what should happen to us on this earth, or financial difficulties, or struggles, or somebody just giving us trouble on job, and uh, or, you know, a wife or husband cheating on us or whatnot, we are all feeling the stress and strife of this world, of this life. And many of us are in really good relationships where we value our other half. And at the same time, we find ourselves as we walk through this world and feel pressed upon, we find ourselves getting far too negative about everything that's transpiring around us carrying it over to our other half and taking it out on them in one way, form, or fashion. Now, we have to really look at their particular situation. When we are going through this, we don't think about it most of the time, but they are going through this. When we're worried about our financial difficulties or where that money is going to come from to pay the next bill, the one laying beside us in bed is worrying about it likewise. Our kids are worried about it because they're seeing it in our behaviors. And they're wondering why mom and daddy are fighting. They're wondering why dad's beating his fist on the table or hanging, slimming down a phone. You know, everybody within your household is going through the same thing. But we go through this pity me, pity me phase or just this uh, worrying about what tomorrow is going to bring phase. I mean, whatever it is that's going through our heads, they are already feeling it. They're feeling the weight of these problems already because they're existing within it too, on their own. But times two, because we are carrying over our difficulties and the magnitude of what we're feeling with it. We're carrying it over onto them, you know, and taking it out on them through acting very negative, through them pushing them away, um, maybe emotionally abusing them, and some people even physically abusing them, you know, and that's being overly passionate, overly emotional, letting strifes and struggles get to you to a point that we never should, you know. In all essence, you know, there is the necessity there of stepping back and evaluating your life and including them in those thoughts because they are in there. And uh, feeling a bit of sympathy for what they are going through because it might be messing with them even more than what it is you. 
of course, we don't evaluate that. Now, people tend to get way too passionate today. I mean, and that is brought on by the intensity of our world and all the problems that are bestowed upon us, you know? And we don't take the time to meditate or step back and reflect before we act in whatever way when we're interacting with other people. Like, you might be keeping your head down, looking over this vast amount of bills on this page, becoming overwhelmed, and when your wife walks in the room, or your husband walks in the room, um, and says, hey, honey, da-da-da-da-da, then you snap your head around and say, look, I said leave me alone, right now I'm trying to figure things out. And that's just not the way to go about things. Now I know because I am as guilty about acting this way. The people that I have been with in the past are very guilty about acting this way. And I've even had somebody jump up and jackpot me, you know, for walking in the room while they were concentrating on something that they were working on, you know. And I actually let this happen to me for, I don't know, um, a good eight years before I got out of it, you know. And yes. We allow ourselves to be a victim a great deal of the time, but we ourselves make the choices and excuses for our other half to stay inside these relationships that we already know aren't good for us. And people, what I'm talking about here is finding peace within your daily life and trying to better shape the world around you to make it your own. Uh, trying to control your own mental anguishes and um, and not letting it weigh out and into such a direction that it's going to hurt somebody close to you. Now this isn't a lecture about being good to your mate, not hitting them or, or whatever. This is, first and foremost, a video to appeal to everybody's better sense, to, to look inside themselves and find a place of logic and wisdom and decide from there to step back and meditate, you know, and maybe when at a moment of passion not interact with another party whatsoever. But learn how to correct that by whenever you feel that passion rising inside of yourself, backing it down with practical considerations and dealing with your internal self before trying to deal with somebody else. But, um, you know, spiritually we're all broken. We are broken. A lot of us feel, even when we don't have a mate that's abusing us, that the world is. And it's true. There's the absence of God within the world around us. And in the way that we act with other people, we find that they're cold. They're there to do their job. And if they're there to collect a debt, they're going to say, Ma'am, I can't help it, whatever your problem is. But this is what it is. And it seems rather cold, but they're doing their job. And chances are they're going through a hundredfold uh, level of tear falling activity at home themselves. You know, and generally because they go through the same thing that we do. But there's an absence of God within the atmosphere and the world around us. There is an absence of compassion and sympathy for other people unless it's something somebody that is so much like us that we can find a way of sympathizing with them but these days you can even find that that's a rare a rare item indeed you know but um, overall we have to have compassion for other people because this is the only way that we're gonna find 
that it could become more widespread and, you know, fight back against the coldness of the world around us. Now, I'm not trying to be a, uh, an over-emotional um, appeal to the world to change mankind thing right here. That's, that's not what I'm trying to do right now. What I am trying to do is help you to reach inside yourself because really and truthfully it starts one person at a time. One person at a time is the only way that it's going to catch on. And it's a domino effect. When you say something good to someone else, then they may say something good to somebody else. And if you say something good to 10 people within your daily life, chances are one of those people are going to say something good to somebody or to 10 people within their life and then maybe that somebody to other people. You know, it's a domino effect, but we don't try. We really don't try. In all essence, and I'm talking about myself included, so I'm not lecturing you. I am talking to you. I'm having a discussion. In all essence, I myself can fall into that feel sorry for me and not reflect on the other guy thing. You know? I can fall into that uh, not caring to say a good word to anybody else because my day's gone horribly bad and I'm all I'm thinking about. I think we're all guilty of that and we have to admit that first. When we can admit that, then we can say, okay, you know what? Spiritually, I'm broken. You know? And then maybe you can find a fix for that. But first off, you've got to want to. You know, too many people are too lazy to try or apply themselves on anything today that would help fix themselves, much less to extend themselves out into helping to fix someone else that is spiritually broken, including their other half. They're too busy thinking about themselves to think about their other half, to give their other half a leg up and maybe a kind word that makes them feel loved or good about themselves. As a matter of fact, a lot of times people today, when their mind is off and in, well, into themselves or in a stressed area somewhere extended out and their loved one tries to interact with them, then they may be inclined without thinking, being kind of absent-minded, be inclined to say something that would hurt the other person or just for the most part not be of a help to them anyway. You know, and when you're pushing somebody away by just acting like you couldn't get involved with the topic that they're trying to post to you right now is enough to break them, much more is enough to make them feel like you don't care and so their world just got a little bit darker yet you know anyway um, this has been one episode on relationship issues and I'm sure that there will be more to talk about within this you know please rate comment and subscribe if you will and you know don't be afraid to talk in the comments below the video you know, to do with your own personal situation or to ask questions. Uh, share the video around to help the channel move along. It is greatly appreciated. Take care of yourself and bye-bye for now.